Hey, it's Mark Weiss. I don't know if the story I'm about to tell you is sad or funny. It's actually both. But it's something you really need to know about because it involves what might be seen or better said mistakenly seen as vicarious liability for the failure to return Medicaid, it would also work with Medicare, overpayments. So here's the story. Uh, this involves Walgreen, the, the pharmacy chain, uh, and a rogue employee who in 2014 or 2015 uh, began altering medical records that they had on file to support the um, prescriptions for certain hepatitis C drugs that were apparently very expensive and only covered by Medicaid under certain medical conditions. As a result, uh, a significant amount of uh, false claims uh, were filed uh, with uh, Medicaid. This is uh, Tennessee Medicaid, as I recall, and uh, payment was made. Uh, subsequently, this uh, pharmacy employee was uh, was caught, um, and uh, at that point, obviously, Walgreen knew about the false billing and the overpayments for Medicaid. But for a period of four or five years, uh, Walgreen did uh, nothing to return the money. Uh, until, of course, as you might imagine, somebody popped up and filed a False Claims Act lawsuit, a whistleblower claim, uh, which Walgreen is now defending. The false claim is the failure to return the Medicaid overpayments within the 60-day window that basically starts when they knew or should have known about the overpayment. Now, it's Walgreen's defense, which is sort of interesting. They claimed that there was no allegation of actual fraud, not your help, that is completely important, because Walgreens knew that there was an overpayment. Uh, and Walgreens also argued that they weren't liable because they weren't the ones who falsely billed and that they were therefore being made to become vicariously liable, liable in somebody else's shoes, so to speak, for the false claim. But the reality is, and when this was shot down by a federal district court judge who's now moving the thing along to trial, the federal court judge's response was, well, you got the money. It wasn't the pharmacist who got the money. It was Walgreens. So the Walgreens false claims case is going to trial. Now, what's funny about it is the fact that they thought that was a good defense. But what's not funny about it is that you have to be very careful about what your employed physicians, if you're running a medical practice, as most of you are, or employed other employees at any sort of a, another type of provider, a facility, for example, are doing in connection with claims. If they are filing claims that are false claims, and if payment to Medicare and Medicaid is being made, and you become aware of those overpayments, the 60-day, more or less, clock begins to tick. The downside, as evidenced by the Walgreens case, is the failure to timely repay that money triggers False Claims Act liability, thereby turning what could be a several hundred dollar claim into a claim that results in over $10,000 in penalties plus trouble damages, etc., etc., for you, let alone the cost of defense. So be vigilant as to what your own employees are doing because the reality is every time they're filing a claim, you're potentially liable.